Well, good afternoon and welcome to this special uh, service, this memorial service. Thank you uh, for coming. This was the closest date we could get to the anniversary, the first anniversary of Mr. Clinton Forbes passing away on the 6th of uh, last year, December. Uh, so thank you uh, for coming. We are recording the service, uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll let the family have the link uh, after uh, the service. So let's stand, if you're able, as we are here to give thanks to God and to remember. So if you respond when it says all. We are in the presence of God, in our need and in our sorrow. We are in the presence of God, in thankfulness for the life we knew and shared. We are in the presence of God, seeking hope and courage for the future. We are in the presence of God, who has promised to be with us always to the end of time. Amen. Let's remain standing if you're able as we sing Abide uh, With Me.
praises of Christ my King Through eternal ages let His praises ring Glory in the highest I will shout and sing Standing on the promises of God that cannot fail when the howling storms of doubt and fear assail by the living word of God I shall prevail standing on the promises of God I now can see Perfect present cleansing in the blood for me Standing in the liberty where Christ makes free Standing on the promises of God of Christ the Lord, bound to Him eternally by love's strong cord, overcoming daily with the Spirit's sword, standing on the promises of God. Welcome to this uh, first anniversary of Mr. Clinton Forbes passing. Thank you for coming and uh, supporting uh, the family. If you're not familiar with the building, there is toilets uh, at the front as you, where you entered. So please make use of them if you need them. So let's pray together. God of compassion, when we feel helpless in our grief, we pray that you would hold us in your heart. God of gentleness, in those moments when life is dark, help us to keep close to you. God of comfort, when we are overcome with sadness, shelter us under your wings. Ever faithful God, help us to find reassurance and hope. In words of scripture, words of hope for all people. So Father, bless those who mourn eternal God with the comfort of your love. That they may face each day with hope and the certainty that nothing can destroy the good that has been given. May our memories become joyful, our days enriched with friendship and our, our lives encircled by your love. So Father, we thank you that we can gather here this afternoon to give you thanks 
with lots of memories and thanksgiving for the life of Mr. Clinton Forbes, for all that he meant and does continue to mean to us, family, friends and church. Father, we commit this time to you, thanking you that you are here. So, Father, we thank you for your love. Thank you that nothing can separate us from that love, nor height, nor depth, nor any created thing. So surround us and comfort us, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Now is an opportunity if you want to share memories, uh, short memories of uh, Mr. Clinton Forbes as it's uh, his Thanksgiving service. So Mrs. Forbes uh, is going to come up and uh, say a few things, then Mr. Archery, and then we'll leave the floor open if uh, anybody else wants to share some thoughts, then uh, feel free. Okay, Mrs. Forbes. everybody to um, no sorry good evening to everybody thank you all to support you know me and Clinton before he passed away and after so much friends you know they support me just the same as when he was alive thank you very much you know and nice and thank the pastor prepare all these flowers for me and the, the, the cooking lady helping me and Carol make flowers together Give him Jamaican flags. Oh, thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Because when I noticed that he take nothing with him, nothing. Nothing you can take with you, nothing. I'm always saying that, sit down on my own. I said, we, we bought our house for the kids them. And nothing you carry with you, nothing. The house is still there. Still there at Sherry Green Road. Nothing go. In, in, um, in chapter 9, um, John, it said, he gone to, so, to, to, to make a place for me. He gone to, to, to make a place for me. And when he find it, one day, when I'm ready, I can come. That's what St. John chapter said. And that's true. One day I'll be there as well with him. So St. John is right. Thank you everybody to come and support me. All, everybody, pure family. And Keith next door. His, his family as well. Keith and Dennis, they live next door. They help me, help me with my dustbin to put it in the right place. Very nice, thank everybody, everybody support me before he passed away. All his friends, them, they're still ringing me to see, you want shopping? You want to go out? Oh, I can never forget that until I did. If I want to go shopping, they take shopping from me. Miss Kirby's son and his wife, I always come in shopping. I said, what's this again? Shopping, she said, I, she don't want me to get hungry. Oh, very nice. Thanks everybody and the pastor. Good afternoon, everyone. May the grace of God through His Son Jesus Christ be with you all as we are here for this memorial service for late brother Mr. Milton Forbes. Mr. Forbes was an outstanding gentleman and within the walls of this church he was well liked. 
there was nothing too hard for him to do for this church, providing that he had the time to do it. He will be one of the first to arrive. And over the years, he was somebody who come and he asked so that he can do certain things within the walls of this church. All of you here present at this time, as we come to approach a here, three days before God called him home, and I'm sure all of us here, as time goes by, he will be slowly miss in our thoughts. I know that Mr. Forbes is rested in peace at this time, and he's sorely missed by you all and myself. He had a, a smile to everybody. I have never heard him say a bad word about anyone. And he always willing to do, to help someone. I decided to select a poem for Mr. Forbes. And I know anywhere he is, he'll be saying to him, that is a good one. And I hope you all will appreciate this as well. Because he was one of the individuals within this church. He loves singing and he has some favorite hymns that he always said that if somebody asks him to choose an hymn, that is the one that he will choose. And I decided, after a couple of days, I decided that I'll read this poem for Mr. Forbes. And I'm sure wherever he is, he'll be smiling. And it is. Don't grieve for me. Don't grieve, grieve for me, for now I am free. I am following the path God laid for me. I took his hand when I heard him call. I turned my back and left it all. I could not stay another day to laugh, to love, to work or play. Tax left undone must stay that way. I found that peace at the close of the day. If my parting has left a void, then fill it and remember the joy. A friendship share, laugh, a kiss. Oh yes, these things do, I will miss. Be not burdened with times of sorrow. I wish all the sunshine of tomorrow. My life's been full of voice so much. Good friends, good times, a loved one touch. Perhaps my time seems all too brief. Don't let it now, don't lend it now with undue grief. Lift up your heart and share with me. God wanted me now. He set me free, and we all will remember Mr. Clinton Forms for the rest of our life, because he was a perfect gentleman to all of us. May God bless you all and keep you safe as well. And a Merry Christmas to all of you when it comes. Thank you, my dear Pastor. Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Archery. So, any of the family or anybody else present uh, want to share some memories?
Now is your opportunity. Yep, well, if you do during the service, just put your hand up and we can uh, uh, do that. So, anybody? No? Yep, okay, thank you. Hi, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'm a good friend of Clinton. I've known Clinton for about 46 years. I um, met Clinton at McVitie's when he used to work for um, Haymills, and we become good pal in them days. Um, very jovial and very happy-go-lucky guy. I'm one of the nicest person I've ever met. Very humble. I've never seen that guy got angry or annoyed with anything or anyone. And um, we become close friends because um, Clint loves his, um, he used to do his little gambling on his horses and that, and um, we, I join up with him, and uh, we used to do um, dog's bets, you know, and um, we, uh, we used to have fun with it, really has, and um, he, is a, he is a person that, um, I would say, um, a very trustworthy person. Clinton also was very helpful indeed. Um, I remember I was doing um, a garden of mine and I needed some rubble. And um, I said, I thought, turn around and said, right, um, the only person I could ask to, to um, fulfill that favour for me is Clint. And when I did ask him, it was, it was absolutely nothing to him to get that rubble for me and brought round so I could do my, uh, my garden, paved it over. He's such a helpful guy. God bless his soul. Wherever you are, Clint, you're a humble man. And um, for his family, um, his wife, a lovely woman, Carmel, um, he is sadly missed. Sadly missed by you, sadly missed by his friends and everybody. Mr. Dolores, you know, God bless you too. All right, take care. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Any peels? Like to say anything? No. Nope. Well, if you do, uh, just wave at me, and I'll get my uh, attention, and uh, we can do that. Okay. Well, let's pray as uh, we reflect on uh, memories which will last uh, forever. So let's pray together. Father God, we thank you that we can be here today. Thank you for the memories that will live on. But we continue to pray for those who are hurting, for those who feel pain, for those who have still got a sense of loss, for those who are finding it hard to put lives back together. We pray that you would hold them in your hand and give them peace and grace to hold them. Lord, we pray for those who are lonely. For those who miss the friendship, the laughter and the love they have lost. For those who long to see a friendly face and feel a loving touch. Lord, hold them in the hollow of your hand, that your peace and grace may hold them. Lord, we pray for those who are angry. For those whose emotions are stretched to breaking point. For those experiencing emptiness that nothing seems to fill. For those who are filled with remorse because of what they said or did or failed to say or do, Lord, hold them in the hollow of your hand, that your peace and grace may hold them. Lord, we pray for those who have lost hope, for those for whom each day is a burden, for those whose faith has been severely tested, and for those who are finding that their pain is bringing them closer to God. For those who find that they cannot cry. For those who are discovering that you share their tears. Lord, hold them in the hollow of your hand, that your peace and grace may hold them. Lord, we pray for those who want to know that you are real and that you do understand their pain. For those who long to put their faith in the risen Jesus and to find their hope in him. 
for those who are discovering that you are the one who promises to walk with us to the end and beyond. Lord, hold them in the hollow of your hand, that your peace and grace may hold them. So, Father, we pray for the family. We pray for all those who are gathered here today. Father, we thank you that during the joys and the sorrows of life, uh, we have Jesus. And we thank you that you've promised never to leave us nor forsake us. Uh, so, Father, as we remember the first anniversary, uh, we give you thanks for his life, for his love of singing, of worship, for his love of coming to this place, for his love for his family and for his wife and friends. We give you praise. Let's take a moment just quietly to remember maybe a, a memory or a thought or something that Clinton did that made us cry or laugh. So Father, we bring our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, who died and rose again, that we might have eternal life. So we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to have a scripture reading which is taken from John's Gospel. Mrs. Forbes referred to John's Gospel just a few moments ago, but this is from John chapter 4. So we're going to listen to Sir David Suchet, who played Poirot. Uh, read this and then I'm going to read a few verses. So let's uh, listen to this now. John chapter 4. Now Jesus learned that the Pharisees had heard that he was gaining and baptizing more disciples than John. Although in fact it was not Jesus who baptized but his disciples. So he left Judea and went back once more to Galilee. Now he had to go through Samaria, so he came to a town in Samaria called Sychar, near the plot of ground Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired as he was from the journey, sat down by the well. It was about noon. When the Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, Will you give me a drink? His disciples had gone into the town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, You are a Jew, and I am a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a dream? For Jews do not associate with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God, and who it is that asks you for a dream, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. Sir, the woman said, You have nothing to draw me. Where can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well and drank from it himself, as did also his sons and his livestock? Jesus answered, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water I give will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give will become in them a spring of water well enough. Thank you. 
Samaritans worship what you do not know. We worship what we do know, for salvation is from the Jews. Yet the time is coming and has now come when the true worshippers will worship the Father in the Spirit and in truth. For they are the kind of worshippers the Father seeks. God is Spirit, and His worshippers must worship in the Spirit and in truth. The woman said, I know that Messiah, or Christ, is coming. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. Then Jesus declared, I am the one speaking to you. I am. And then we pick it up in verse 39. Many Samaritans believe. Many of the Samaritans from that town believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I've ever done. So when the Samaritans came to him, they urged him to stay with them. And he stayed two days. And because of his words, many more became believers. They said to the woman, we no longer believe just because of what you said. Now we've heard for ourselves and we know that this man really is the saviour of the world. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's stand if you're able as we sing. Because he lives, I can face uh, tomorrow.
nobody's waving at me yet. So, uh, just a short uh, reflection on this passage of uh, John chapter uh, four today, as we gather to remember and to give thanks to God for uh, Clinton's uh, life. It's uh, I don't know about you, but it's certainly very difficult for me because uh, where's the year gone? It's uh, passed uh, so quick, and uh, Mr. Forbes is a huge loss, I'm sure, to all of us, and. Uh, certainly to the church uh, here, but uh, memories do uh, live on. We give thanks for his life, and I would encourage us all to continue to support the family and uh, Mrs. Forbes uh, and keep in touch uh, with each other. Uh, I've already said that Mr. Forbes loved to sing. He also loved the betting shop, um, as we have heard. Um, so continue to support, visit, and uh, pray for one another. A number of people are sending their thoughts and prayers on uh, the live stream. Uh, we've Mariam's watching it from Iraq, Mrs. Forbes. Uh, Beverly and Akin uh, are watching and send their love. And also Alison, uh, just to mention uh, a few. Uh, in her Bible reading, this well-known story of this encounter uh, Jesus had with this uh, lady at uh, the well. Our reading told us that uh, Jesus determined that he had to meet with this lady, so he determines to go to Samaria uh, to meet this lady because this was a divine appointment. Jesus took an unusual route uh, to this place. And why did he do that? Well, he did it because he knew that he was going to meet this lady at the well. He goes because this lady uh, needs to meet with Jesus. The woman has a bit of a past, and it's interesting that she comes to the well at 12 noon. That wasn't the thing to do, because you would come earlier to uh, the well before it gets really hot. Why does she come at noon? Well, she comes at noon because she doesn't want to meet anybody else, because she's embarrassed. She doesn't want people pointing the finger or uh, tongues wagging, because she had a bit of a reputation. She comes because she doesn't want to meet anyone, because she had a reputation in her town. Remember that Samaritans were half Jewish, half gentle, and if you were Jewish, you would have nothing to do uh, with someone who was a Samaritan. And this meeting between Jesus and the woman whose name we are not told was a divine appointment. It wasn't in her diary. It wasn't arranged, it wasn't either by chance that this happened. And uh, this is one of the amazing things about Jesus, because time and time again, Jesus did this. And uh, how did he know that this woman was going to be at the, the well? Well, Jesus is God. He knows everything. Uh, so he knew exactly when this woman was going to be at the well. He had it all planned. Verse uh, Chapter 4 and verse 1. Now he had to go through Samaria. And Jesus, as he goes through this area and as he meets this woman at the well, he breaks lots of barriers. Uh, first barrier, Jesus is a man. He's a Jewish rabbi. And uh, Jewish men do not speak to women if it's not your wife in public. Uh, so this was uh, a barrier that uh, Jesus broke down. Speaking to this lady in public. Jesus, a rabbi, a teacher. Another barrier that Jesus broke down was that Jesus is Jewish. She is a Samaritan. They have nothing to do with each other. Yet Jesus breaks those barriers uh, down. So Jesus breaks not only gender barriers, but also racial uh, barriers as well. We're in the season of Advent. Tomorrow is the second Sunday in Advent, we are counting down to Christmas, and that's what Christmas is all about. Jesus came, one of us, God with human skin on, because God loves us and God cares for us. The story in John shouts out to us that uh, uh, Jesus uh, came, doesn't matter who we are, doesn't matter what we've done in life, uh, he loves us. That's what the message of Christmas and later Easter is all about. Jesus cares because he loves. He loves because the Father loves. For God so loved the world 
that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Verse 17, this woman, and this is interesting because this is the shortest thing she says. I have no husband. I have no husband. She's under conviction because she's had more than one husband and the man that she is with now is not her husband. It's interesting that she tries to deflect Jesus from the conversation after uh, this has been said. And she speaks about worship, where to worship and how to worship. And as Jesus and the woman talk, uh, she's ignorant of uh, many things. She doesn't know who Jesus is. And it's interesting as the conversation progresses, she goes from prophet to Messiah to saviour of the world. Who Jesus is and what he had to offer and how she could receive this living water. And as the conversation progresses, so does her understanding. And in the end, she does know who Jesus is. And the amazing thing about this story is, in the verses that I read, is that she doesn't keep that for herself. Uh, she goes and tells people, come and meet someone that knows everything about me. God knows everything about us. Uh, I like history and uh, Oliver Cromwell, who was a Lord Protector, that famous painting that was done of him, paint me warts and all. He wanted a true reflection in the painting of uh, what he really was like. God knows what we're really like. Verse 25, the woman said, I know that Messiah called Christ is coming. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. And then Jesus declared, I, the one speaking to you, I am he. So Jesus went this way because he knew that he was going to meet this woman. And he also knew because of this woman's faith that uh, many people in her town would come to faith as well. And verse 28, the thing that she came to the well for, water, verse 28 tells us that she actually left her water because she goes back with something far greater than physical water. She goes away with living water, eternal uh, life. And she says in verse 29, come and see a man who told me everything I've ever done. And many uh, came to faith uh, later. She leaves her water jar. She's so excited uh, about seeing Jesus. I don't know if you go to church, but if you don't go to church, you're very welcome to come to us uh, any Sunday at uh, 11 o'clock. Mr. Forbes had faith in Jesus. He loved to sing. I love to sing as well. Uh, he loved worshipping Jesus. Uh, all of us are on a journey in life. I often say that there's four things certain in life. We are born, we pay taxes, we meet a Jehovah Witness and we die. Maybe you have lots of questions about life and life is very difficult at the moment with the cost of living and lots of pressures and worries. Many Samaritans believed because of this woman's testimony. I wonder if he will come to faith because of Mr. Forbes' testimony, of his life, of his journey of faith, of Mrs. Forbes. I would encourage you to read God's word and come to know Jesus, whom to know is life everlasting. I want to finish by uh, reading this poem, uh, which sums up, don't be under the illusion that when you become a Christian that everything is perfect, because being a Christian is very difficult. Life sometimes and quite often gets more harder, but we have a saviour who is with us each step of the way. So when I say I'm a Christian, I'm not shouting I've been saved. I'm whispering I, lost, I get lost sometimes. That's why I chose this way. When I say I'm a Christian, I don't speak with human pride. I'm confessing that I stumble, needing God to be my guide. When I say I'm a Christian, I'm not trying to be strong. I'm professing that I'm weak and pray for strength to carry on. When I say I'm a Christian, I'm not bragging of success but I'm admitting that I failed and cannot ever pay the debt. When I say I'm a Christian, I don't think I know it all. I submit to my confusion, asking humbly to be taught. When I say I'm a Christian, I'm not claiming to be perfect. My flaws are far too visible, but God believes I'm worth it all. 
When I say I'm a Christian, I still feel the sting of pain. I have my share of heartache, which is why I seek God. When I say I'm a Christian, I do not wish to judge. I have no authority. I only know that I'm loved. Let's uh, say the uh, Lord's Prayer uh, together. Um, so let's say the Lord's Prayer together. Uh, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Mr Forbes had a favourite hymn and uh, that was how deep the Father's love for us. That woman at the well discovered how deep Jesus' love was for her. Mr Forbes knew of the deep love of the Father for him and hopefully you do as well because it's true even if you don't believe it, it is true. So let's stand if you're able as we sing uh, this great hymn. Psalm 30 verse 11 says, You've turned my mourning into dancing. You've stripped off my sackcloth and clothed me with joy. When the burden of grief is heavy, lighten our load and lift our spirits. When despair darkens our horizon, 
Shine forth your light and lead the way. When our hearts feel broken, comfort us and hold us in your embrace. When we rage against the injustice of loss, channel this power into all that is good. When sorrow surrounds us, wrap us in hope that we may endure. When we're overwhelmed in the dark of night, may the breaking of dawn bring peace. For we know, O Lord our God, that you hear our cries for help. And so we ask you to turn our mourning into dancing. Everyone needs compassion. Our last uh, hymn. Everyone needs compassion, a love that's never failing. Let mercy fall on me. Everyone needs forgiveness, the kindness of a Savior, the hope of nations. Savior, he can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever. Author of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. So take me as you find me. All my fears and failures. Fill my life again I give my life to follow Everything I believe in Now I surrender Saviour, he can move the mountains My God is mighty to save He is mighty to save Forever, author of salvation, he rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Shine your light and let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory of the risen King. Jesus, shine your light and let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory of the risen King. Saviour, He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever. Author of salvation, He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Thank you for coming. Do stay in your seats uh, and then when the food is ready, if we go through this door here, the one you came in, and we come out that door to save uh, congestion. Uh, but I'm going to close uh, in a blessing on behalf of the family. Thank you uh, for coming and uh, supporting and coming to this memorial service. So a blessing as we finish. May God give to you and all whom you love his comfort and his peace his light and his joy in this world and the next. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this day and forever. Amen. And Father, we thank you for the food uh, that we're about to receive. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless. Uh, do sit down for a while till the food is ready.